Most apps on the App Store look free to download, but when you actually use them, you quickly discover they're not really free at all. Here's what's happening. These apps use smart psychological techniques to get you to pay. And the secret weapon? Something called a paywall. Now, building apps has never been easier thanks to AI tools like Cursor and Claude Code. You can create a simple app with specific features pretty quickly, but here's where most people get stuck actually making money from their app. The good news is it doesn't have to be hard. The apps that succeed know exactly how to present their paywalls. Today, I'm going to show you three proven strategies that will get your users to actually pay for your app. Now, there are two parts to the perfect paywall. First, you need to get users to the paywall. Second, you need to convert them into paying customers once they're there. This is the most important part of your entire app. Get this wrong and your app won't make money. The good news? You don't need to learn how to code anymore thanks to AI tools, but you absolutely need to understand design psychology. You need to know what makes a great paywall work and exactly how to guide users to it. What works for a meditation app won't work for a photo editor. Each app category has different user behaviors and expectations. Today's video is sponsored by Make. Make is an automation platform that helps you connect apps and build workflows without touching code so you can focus on what matters. But here's where it gets exciting. Make isn't just about simple automations. With Make AI agents, you can create automations that actually think. These agents adapt, make decisions, and keep tasks running without you babysitting them. It's like giving your workflow its own brain. And then there's Make Grid. Imagine a bird's eye view of everything you've automated. All laid out in a clean visual grid. No messy lists, no guessing what's connected where, just clarity. So if you're ready to work smarter and save hours every week, hit the link in the description and start building with Make Today. And here's the best part. When you sign up through that link, you'll get one month of the pro plan completely free, including 10,000 ops a month plus all the other pro perks. That's automation made smarter with Make. The first category is apps that require an instant value preview. This primarily applies to content and education apps. Building effective paywalls for these apps requires specific principles, which you'll learn in this video. Now, if you're vibe coding and you need to provide your agent with solid references, what do you do? Well, I have a resource for that and it's free. The site is called Paywall Screens. It features thousands of examples from real working apps. You can browse any paywall design you want, view their evolution history, and see related variations. And with AI, to replicate one, Simply take a screenshot and provide it to your AI agent for cloning. Content and education apps need this type of user flow when they lack the fame factor. Consider Netflix as a contrast. Netflix provides content but doesn't need to prove its value upfront. People already know it offers exclusive movies and TV shows. They have established trust. Lesser known apps must demonstrate their value immediately. Now for having this type of paywall, I have listed out some examples. Take Babbel, the language learning app. Their paywall is exceptionally clear, but before examining its elements, let's walk through the user flow that apps in this category can use to deliver instant value. When you start using this language learning app, you complete onboarding and gain access to select starter languages. The remaining languages stay behind the paywall. In this case, you give out the most famous and learned languages in the free tier. If you choose a free language like Spanish, you are provided with a lesson that is divided into sections. Now you can see that you need to start with the first course and the rest are locked. Now to a new user, they aren't locked behind a paywall. They are locked in terms of progress. And in order to reach the second section, the user must complete the first one. The rest of the sections are hidden behind a paywall, but the user doesn't know it yet and it does not drive him away and he can start with the first course. This approach delivers value immediately. You experience the core functionality before encountering any payment request. After completing the first lesson and attempting to access the second in a progress way, essentially gamifying the language learning experience experience. At this point, you encounter the paywall. Now, in this case, let's examine what makes a paywall convert effectively. This example draws from Babel's design, which I implemented in Claude code using a specific rule file and design agent. This method achieved the design in one shot, while other approaches would have required multiple iterations. Several key elements enhance paywall effectiveness. First, make the value proposition crystal clear. For a language app, consider two scenarios. If the user explores a specific language, specify that all 14 languages come included with subscription. If they started with a free language, emphasize that over 100 lessons from beginner to advanced levels are included. Then list additional benefits so users understand the complete value they receive. 
After that, you have a really important human element in how people perceive prices. Before I dive into the details, understand this fundamental principle. The main function of paywalls is not to sell the most expensive plan. It's to sell the most affordable option that remains profitable for the app. Let me walk you through how this works psychologically. When you look at this paywall, you see two options presented side by side. The lifetime plan at $299.99 and the yearly plan shown as $9 per month. Notice how the $9 price appears in much larger text. This creates an immediate visual contrast that makes the yearly option feel dramatically cheaper. Here's where it gets clever. That $9 figure is actually the monthly breakdown of a yearly subscription that costs $107 and 99 cents total. By showing the monthly cost instead of the annual total, they make the price feel more manageable. Meanwhile, other options like true monthly plans are hidden behind a show all plans button, keeping the focus on these two choices. Now think about the user's visual journey through this paywall. After completing their first free lesson and experiencing the app's value, they encounter these two options. Their eyes naturally go to the large $9 text first. Then they glance at the $299 lifetime price which seems enormous by comparison. They also notice the prominent 50% savings badge on the yearly plan, making it feel like an incredible deal. The contrast is deliberate. By placing an expensive lifetime option next to the yearly subscription, they make the yearly plan look incredibly reasonable. Most users will think, why would I pay $300 upfront when I can get started for just $9 a month? This staging technique pushes users toward the yearly subscription, which is exactly what the app wants. It's profitable, creates recurring revenue, and feels affordable to the user. This pricing psychology is standard across successful content and education apps. Now, before we continue to the second paywall, I want to show you how I'm able to replicate these designs really nicely and share my general design workflow. I've created a slash command called design, and it contains all the context for building the app prototype that I need, all with good design and animations. On the back end, it runs through design.md, which is the prompt file. If you feel a little overwhelmed about how to use Claude code or what these commands are, I've included resources with clear instructions in the description so you can understand everything step by step and easily use Claude code. This design.md file is taken from SuperDesign. SuperDesign is an extension for cursor and VS code, and they actually open source their design prompt. I have it installed right now. If I run the initialize super design command, it would generate a claude.md file with the prompt for good design, but it's for an iterative workflow. I also have a separate video on this, which I'll link below. Now, what those iterative workflows do is help you refine your designs until you reach a final result. But if you already have your app planned out, structured, and you've gathered your design inspiration, then I've built a stripped down version of the super design prompt, which I'll also include in the resources. They've made it really specific and optimized for quick implementation, so you can instantly see how a design looks in your app. That's because it's implemented in HTML for speed, but instead of raw HTML styling, it uses Flowbyte. This makes the designs look much better compared to just using simple vanilla CSS. Overall, it's a really solid design prompt that you should absolutely use while working on your designs. One of the biggest app markets out there is productivity apps. These apps promise to make you more productive, and there's a specific category that focuses on building habits. Most habit building apps follow the same framework to keep you engaged long term. I call this the habit hook. You'll find these apps in health, fitness, and wellness categories. They all use your habits as a way to keep you coming back. Here's how they work. These apps hook you by showing your progress and making that progress feel visible and rewarding. Take Habit Kit as an example. It lets you build habits, track them, and display them in visual grids. Their paywall isn't the most beautiful, but it's highly functional, and the app has grown significantly because of it. So how do these apps actually make you stick around? The formula is simple. Since they use progress as their hook, they first give you a taste of that progress. Most habit apps offer a free week where you can use everything freely. During that time, you build habits and see progress. You start getting attached to it. That's when they show you the paywall. Some apps like HabitKit take a different approach. Instead of limiting you by time, they limit you by features. You might create just a few habits for free, but if you want unlimited habits, you need to upgrade. This is a brilliant strategy. Progress naturally wants to expand. By restricting that expansion, the app pushes you toward the paywall. Another great example is SleepCycle. Let me show you how their paywall works. I've built an example modeled on SleepCycle 
cycle, but for a habit tracker. The core elements are the same and work across different app types. Many techniques from language learning apps also apply here. The pricing contrasts, the discounts, it's all there. The difference is in the user journey. Sleep Cycle makes this very clear. After you create your account, they walk you through what you're getting. It's the same formula, clear insights into the benefits. If you signed up for one feature, they use the paywall to show you additional ones too. You discover the app can do much more than what initially drew you in. The seven-day trial is crucial here. It's tried and true. The flexible billing reassures users. If they don't like it, they can cancel. This safety promise gives peace of mind, making it easier to try pro features. When you look at the paywall structure, you'll see familiar elements. The yearly plan is highlighted. The comparison emphasizes the daily cost. Combined with discounts and smart framing, this makes the yearly plan feel like the obvious choice. The techniques overlap with other categories, but habit apps are unique in how they use progress as the hook. They get you invested in building momentum, then carefully position the paywall to convert that momentum into a subscription. Next up, we have another category I call creative friction. This represents apps that solve urgent problems when you need them most. The word friction tells you everything. You have a task that feels like the biggest problem in your life right now, and you need it solved immediately. That's where creative apps come in. Video editors, photo editors, PDF converters, they all work this way. Let's look at PDF converters as an example. They strategically limit how many pages you can convert for free. You might convert one page free, but need to convert 10 pages. So you end up paying. Since most people need more than one page, this strategy works perfectly. Most phones can handle simple tasks now, but for advanced needs, you still need specialized apps. That's exactly how these tools push you toward paying. Video editing apps work the same way. They know you need to edit your video, so they let you download the app for free. Take CapCut as an example. You spend time editing your video, and only at the very end when you're ready to export, you discover the catch. High quality exports like 1080p are locked behind a paywall. The free version only gives you 720p. Since you've already put in all that work, you're much more likely to pay. Let's look at a specific example, Photo Room. It's widely used and their paywalls are incredibly efficient. From this, I want to introduce an important concept called the paywall ladder. Here's how it works. They start you with a basic paid version, something like HD export, but they put other valuable features in the next tier, the Pro plan. Even in Pro, some features are missing. Those are only in the Max plan. So they create a ladder. The same principle applies here. They make the pro plan look most desirable. They often tag it as most popular. This technique isn't just for apps. Apple uses it with their hardware too. The base MacBook might be missing key features. Once you start adding upgrades, the price gets closer to the next model up. That ladder keeps pushing you higher until you're paying more than you planned. Apps use this same ladder approach. They guide you step by step toward the plan they most want you to buy. That brings us to the end of this video. If you'd like to support the channel and help us keep making videos like this, you can do so by using the super thanks button below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.